Hi, everyone. Welcome to my scrap room office. I'm Deanne Castro, Creative Memories Advisor in Bakersfield, California. And I have a border that actually it took me a long time to figure this out. Um, I spent last night trying to work on an idea and I wasn't getting very far. And so finally, after a few hours, I said, forget this, I'm going to bed. So when I got up this morning, um, I was looking at some of the paper and a different idea kind of hit me. So I went with it and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So let me show it to you. Okay, so here is the Halloween border. It is October, October 3rd. And soon we are going to be greeting little kids coming to our doors asking for candy. So I decided I'm going to do a little bit of a Halloween border. And um, this is kind of what I came up with. Okay. So this particular piece of paper has a moon in it, but the moon is in the middle of the paper. So I had to figure out a way to get the moon out of it. And um, then there was a lot of paper left over. So um, I went ahead and did this one without the moon, but it still shows some night clouds. And that one was cut out right, right below this one. So it looked like that. And then I still had another inch and a half on the bottom. So I went with this one using different papers, um, pretty much the same for the bats. But on this one, I did not rip the paper. On both of these, I ripped the paper on the uh, border maker cartridge for these bats and really liked the effect that it gave. But for this one, it was getting kind of small and so I didn't rip it. Um, but the ones I'll show you tonight, I did, I think, just go ahead and do it ahead of time. So anyway, and so that one came off the bottom. Now there was still the rest of the sheet on the top that I didn't use, but that's kind of how it went. So I made three different borders out of this um, and could actually make a fourth with the piece that's left over. So I wanted to show those to you. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to be using this piece of paper. So what I want to do is I want to cut four and a half inches off the bottom of this piece to get ready for the rest of the borders that we're gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna cut four and a half inches off the bottom, which will give me my base piece. And I'm going to save that for later. And then this one, uh oh, I didn't bring my, oh, I didn't bring that. Hold on just a second. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. I totally forgot to get the jumbo circle cutter and the red blade. That's what I need to go with this. Now I'm gonna put this up on the top here and I am going to line this up. I have marked my templates every, um, well, not every every 10 minutes, but almost. Actually, there it, it, there are marks on that one, but they're a little more faint. So I know when I line this one up, this one up, this would be at three o'clock, this would be at six o'clock, this one's gonna be at nine o'clock. And I know that it's going to be um, exactly in the center when I do that. 
but I don't want this one in the center. I want this one down a lot further. So I am going to cut the top of this at three and three quarter inches from the top. Now it's kind of hard to see that. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to go down to the three and three quarter mark here. One, two, three and three quarters. And just kind of hold that there. Now I can go ahead and I can get this centered, lining this up with the zero centering part of my ruler up against the six mark here. And I'm going to just do a partial circle. And I'm going to pull this one back out just to see about how far down I went. Okay, so I kind of went down to just above the six inch line. About six and a quarter is about how far I took it down. Well, hold on, let me press this up. About six and five eighths. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of estimate that. I'm gonna start over on this side. And about the five eighths inch mark, if I put this up here, is gonna be right about here. Okay, so move that down just a little bit. Make sure that both knobs are in that groove. Hold on, let me measure this one more time, guys. I want to get this right for you. It's going to be about right there. Okay. So I'm going to take it up, go all the way around, do about the same place on the other side. And this is just going to be kind of a, a guesstimate. This over here. And put it down to the floor. About there. Okay. And this was just really kind of guesswork on my part. Um, wasn't really sure. Cut it down a little low. That's okay. Make it work. Okay. Now I'm going to put the rest of this together. So this particular piece I'm going to cut with the border maker cartridge with the bats. Okay. And just for the sake of time, I have already ripped down this one particular side. Now I made this piece about three inches wide because it's easier to hold as you're ripping down the part of the paper. And I just ripped off just, just a little bit. Come on, camera focus. Anyway, um, it doesn't wanna focus, but just so you can see, just ripped off a little end of that to get this. So now I'm gonna put it in the cutting cartridge here. And move this out of the way. I'm gonna put this in as straight as I can up against this edge. Hold it down and put these knobs in the section down here where this little mark right here will line up with these marks here as we go down. You guys have all probably seen this before. 
but just in case you haven't, line it up and punch, look out, and move it down to each notch. Okay, now I'm going to save some of these because I may use them on the spider web part. But now I'm going to take this out. And now I'm going to just hold my thumb just above where the star is and then move it down to where the bat is. So I can just kind of judge where I'm ripping this paper as I go down. Because I don't want to rip into the star. But I still want to get as close as I can so it'll match the other side. Okay, so I'm pulling this part up because that will give me the white edge on this paper. If I pulled it down, then it would give the white edge on this side, and that's not where I want it. So I'm pulling it up on the right hand side. Making sure my thumb is over those stars and the bottom of the bat on this side. You can vary that, that tear a little bit if you want. It's the part where it's hard to see as you're going down because it cold curls over where you're uh, trying to rip. That's why I pushed it down over there. Okay. And like that, I have this piece. So now I want to put some orange shimmer paper behind this. And I'm going to cut this at seven eighths. So I don't want a full inch, but I also don't want three quarters because three quarters will not be wide enough, but one inch is too wide for what we're doing here. Okay. So now I'm going to turn this over and put some repositionable tape down the middle of it here. So it'll hold this orange piece down. Center this on here and make sure that it's covering up the stars and the bats all the way down. Okay, so there, the orange shimmer paper shows through. Okay, so we're gonna put that there. And I have a feeling that that is going to be cut a little high. But we'll see what happens when we get the spider web on there. Okay, so the, what I want to do in case I want to use, I'll off the side over here. Okay, so in case I want to use the, the black and white bats like I did in the sample, I'm going to put this piece of paper in and cut another piece with the border of the cartridge just to get these black and white bats. I won't use this piece on anything, but I just want to get these bats to put in the spider web if that's what I'm deciding to do in a little bit. I'm not quite sure. Um, we'll see if I decide to on stickers instead. So we'll put these over here. Okay, I'm gonna put this piece out of the way. Okay, so next, I want to make the spider web. Now, um, you're gonna cut one side of the paper with the border maker cartridge. And 
I'm going to use this spiderweb punch. Now, both these punches are still available online. They came out last year, but they're, they are still available. So if you don't have one of these and you want to make this border, you're going to want to make grab that real quick from your advisor. Okay. If you do not have an advisor, I would be happy to help you out. You can go to my website, www.creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash DN Castro. And you can order these from my website or contact me and I can help you out with your order. But please make sure if you have an advisor to go ahead and use her. Okay, so this is actually a frame punch. So this is gonna look a little different than the usual border punches. It's going to have a little bit of a separation and the silver line down the side here. Can you see that? Now that is gonna be used if you make a frame with this punch, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to just cut it straight across. So I'm gonna put the paper in and I'm gonna be moving it to the left. So I'm gonna line it up with this line right here, okay? So I'm gonna slide the paper in, line it up with that black line, Push the paper up against the back as far as the, it'll go. I won't punch it. Now, typically, we want you to cover up all of the blue with that entire pattern like this. But when we do that, this is not centered in this blue line here. And I want to make sure that it's centered. So I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And so it's not going to exactly cover the blue on this side, but I do want it centered in there. And, it, and that will make more sense to you uh, when we go to the other side. Okay, but I'm just going to punch this all the way across, center it in that blue line. And then when we get done with this, we're going to cut this off and trim it and then punch the other side. And that way we'll get one of these. Okay. So I already punched the white one that I'm going to use just for the sake of time, but I wanted to show you how to punch this one. Oh. Okay. So, and sometimes you'll have a little piece left over, which is fine. Just trim it off. Okay, now to get this as close as possible without it breaking apart on me when I'm punching the other side, I'm gonna cut this at two inches and it's two and one sixteenth of an inch. Let me look at my... Um, two and one sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to get my trimmer back out. Move this out of the way. Now this is really kind of hard to see because that one little sixteenth of an inch mark is really hard to line the tips of these up with. So what I do is I take another piece of paper line it up at that two and one sixteenth of an inch so now I know exactly where the edge of these need to be to get this straight. Okay, now you need to get it as close as you can to that two and one sixteenth so that this middle part here will be as small as possible. Okay, so now when I pull this punch back out, when I put this in here, we're not, I'm not gonna be able to see any how to line it up. So the trick to doing that is you take a post-it note. We have stuck to everything else. Okay, and I'm gonna line this post-it note up right with the edge of this paper. 
And I'm going to make sure it's exactly straight on that edge. Okay, so it's perfectly straight against that edge. Now, the first part I cut from the left and moved it to the left, which was actually this particular side first. So I want to do this one opposite. So I have the post-it note on the right-hand side, and I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to line this up with the right black line. And see, when you put the post-it note on it, now it sticks out far enough to even see where it's going to cut. Okay? So I'm going to line that up with the black line. Oh, I'm going to punch, and then I'm going to move this over to this side and make sure that this line right here is centered in that blue, okay? And then that, theoretically, should make sure that both points on each side are going to be right across from each other. So these should be pretty exact doing it this way. And we'll see what happens when I get done here. Line it up and center it. Still pushing this side back up against the ed back edge of this cartridge. And sometimes it does take a little bit of extra time just to make sure it's right so that it will line up on both sides. Okay, take the post-it note off. And there you go. Now you can always make this a little bigger. You can make it a little wider. I'll show you on this one. This particular one, the black and white piece was cut the same way. It was punched first, then I lined it up, cut it at two and one sixteenth of an inch and then um, cut it all the way across. The orange behind it, that was done with it, um, the second piece getting cut at one and one eighth. So it gave a little extra of the orange on both sides. It made it just a little bit bigger. But when I did that, this center piece was too wide and it wouldn't bend really easy. So I just took a pair of scissors and I cut it up on each of these little middle sections, not all the way, because I didn't want to cut it all the way off, but I cut it a lot of the way up on all of these, and then it allowed it to bend, okay? Because so these here, this will bend really fairly easily because it's so thin. Now, if you cut it too short, if you, I mean too small, you and to where it's just two, inches exactly, it doesn't cut all the way across. These end up getting cut individually, which is cool because then you can use them on other um, areas of your page, just as little spider webs maybe up in the corners or something. But this was cut at two inches and it came apart. It didn't stay together. So that's why it's important that you do this with two and one sixteenth. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm done with this punch for now. Now, for the sake of time, I did go ahead and punch a white one that's exactly the same size because I do want to make this stand out a little better. And I'm just going to have a little bit of the white showing, like so. So when I put it on the border, it's the orange stands out better on the black. Okay, so. I'm going to turn this over, use the repositionable tape. Uh, 
Okay, and I'm just gonna line it up where just some of the white is showing, but not a whole lot. So I don't want the white to be, you know, uh, the main color here. I want it to be the orange. But doing this now will allow the, um, the spider web part to stand out better. I'm trying to get this on here. I have too much white showing. I probably didn't punch it exact like I did the other one. So that's okay. All right, that's good enough. So now I'm just gonna wanna bend this just a little bit so that it, it goes in a little bit of a wave when I get it on there. Okay, so let's see if this is going to work. So this goes down here and I'm gonna have this here. Come like that. Put this back in the middle. Mm, that's a little too much. Okay. So I'm going to recut this and it's not going to show. Ooh. Take that back. It will. I thought if I made it bigger, it wouldn't show. But I think. The line will show, so I'm going to have to just make this work. Okay. Where's my adhesive? Put this down on the bottom. Put some of the repositionable on the edges so it stays down better. And put this down here. Okay. Now I'm going to put some repositionable on these. And fit these on here somehow. Push these up. Okay, and we got them on there. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back, the jumbo circle cutter, and I'm just going to trim a little bit more of a circle off the edges to go around this. So I'm going to put that at about. There. Put it down just a little bit. Okay. Do the same thing to the other side. So you can see there's quite a bit of little bit of guesswork 
to this particular one. Um, but so there's no right or wrong way to be doing this border, you guys. You can do this any way you'd like. So I didn't get all the way to the edge here. So I didn't want to cut too far. So now I'm just going to trim this piece here. There we go. And a tiny bit here. So let's see. Now this particular piece I didn't reuse, but you can go ahead and cut it off here on the top, just cut it straight across, and then you'll have some more uh, lighter clouds and stuff here that you can then do another border on this side if you want. But I didn't use that particular side. Now, the other thing if you want is, Oh, I didn't tell you what paper pack I used. This was um, Halloween Hauntings. I don't have the paper to show you which one it was just because I uh, accidentally threw it out a while back, but I'm using these papers. Um, it was last year's Halloween paper um, is what this collection was, but I'm sorry, I don't even remember the name offhand. Um, but when I was using these papers, I really liked these bats. And I know bats are mostly black, but being black and white from what I punched, they show up a whole lot better on these spider webs. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull some of these out. And I know there's some bigger ones in here somewhere. Here we go. And I know there probably needs to be spiders in the spider webs, but I figured since this was going up in the air that the bats really would be better um, than spiders at this particular point. Now, I do have some spider stickers that I'm gonna use on another one, um, but just to give you an idea, There's three, and I need two more. Three more, two more, three more, three more. And I just put these in various places on these on the web. And you guys can let me know what you think of this border. Um, it is a little different and uh, not exactly what some people would be thinking of with webs in the sky, but you know what, if you're on the ground and you look up at your light, at your garage light, and there's all those spider webs up there, you could be kind of looking through that this way, you know? Use your imagination. <laughs> and one more here. Let's put him about right there. Okay. What do you think? Isn't it cute? I really liked it. I really liked having the spider web curled up and around that way. Okay. So now the next piece. The next piece is a three and a half inch, let me look at my directions here, three and three quarter inches. I think four and a half to the bottom. So we're just gonna cut the bottom of this off at one and a half inches and just use the rest of it. Then I'll measure it so we'll know what that is because at the moment I'm, I've got too many quarters and halves and sixteenths going around in my brain. Okay, so if I cut this at one and a half, this piece comes up to be about three inches. 
Let me check that on this. Some three inches. Yeah, three inches. So we'll have this one at three inches. And we'll end up with the last piece for the last border at one and a half inches. So here we've got all these really great clouds still in this border piece. And for the sake of time, I did go ahead and pre-cut these pieces. So I'm going to put these on here. Put the bats down on the bottom. And here again, use a little more of the repositionable tape right on these little edges. This is going to go on the bottom. Okay, and then this one is again going to go in a little bit of an arch. The cool thing about this is you can make a double page spread using these different borders. You can have the bigger one on one side, you can have this one or the smaller one on the other side, and then you've got one left over for um, another page in another album or just um, the prior year. But it gives you several, several of these if you want to go ahead and then make extra borders to go on other pages while you're at it. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. But I just wanted to give you the option. So I'm gonna put this right about in the middle. And put these there. This one over here. And that one's done. Okay, now the last one, and then you can put the bats or you can put spiders, whatever you want on there. And then the very last one. And because this is only one and a half inches, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by adding this to the bottom and then putting our tape chips on the back. And then that way, it goes ahead and makes the border a little bit wider for you. And it also gives you adhesive that's already on the back of this. So these are our tape chips and they're little scores of double-sided tape. So line this up exactly on the edges. one in the middle, put one on the end, and then fill it in just a little bit with however many you would like. I'm just going to put five on here, but you can do more if you want. Now when you're ready to put it on your page, you just take the paper off the tape chips Add a little bit more adhesive, and it's ready to go on your um, on your your photo page. Okay, so also done for the sake of time. I went ahead and pre-cut these. And then just turn them a little bit so that they will arch up. Now this one can go on here like this, but there, because this is smaller, there's a moon in these stickers, but I see it. We can use this gold moon, or there's a little white moon. It's really hard to see that one. I think I'm gonna use this gold moon and put it on here. right about there so that we can see it. OK, 
Okay, and then these are going to need to go down a little bit. Add the adhesive. Okay, try to get this centered. So I'm going to put this on here. Center it as so. Now, the other thing that you can do, and I'm going to look for the well. pen. This is maybe this will work. Okay, so to make these bats show up a little better, I'm going to just put some little dots on them. Now you can use a bigger, thicker pen if you want. This one just has to be a very fine point that I happen to pull out of there. So I'm just making them a little bigger here. All the way across. Okay, and then they show up a little better with those dots on them. Okay, now these stickers also have some spiders. So I think on this one, I'm gonna put some of these spiders in the web. There's a spider. There's a spider. One over here. Okay, and then I think I'm going to put this candlestick right here. And if you want, you can use foam squares. I'm just gonna stick it on here, but if you want a little bit more dimension, you can use the foam squares. And then we can even put a black kitty over here in the corner. And we can put a pumpkin over on this side. Okay, and you can do that with all of them. You can go ahead and add, let's see. This one, we can add, I wonder if this will show up. It says enchanted. No, that's, yeah, that shows up good there. Okay, so we'll put that sticker there. This already has bats in it from earlier, but adding that sticker I think really helps. And then this one, we can even put a different title sticker on just to finish it up. Okay, I put a spell on you, beware, happy hunting, trick or treat. I'm going to add trick or treat right there. Okay, so how does it look on a page? Let me show you. This particular page is the orange shimmer. It's all orange shimmer. But this paper on each side is two and a half inches wide. But if you take your border and add it onto your page, Now this one's pretty big, so it takes up quite a bit of room. But if you center it down there on the bottom, then you can get um, various photos on here, but you can do several four by sixes. You're gonna overlap the top of this if you'd like. 
and then you can have um, a journaling box or something right here. So you can get quite a few photos on here of your Halloween. So what do you think, guys? Do you like it? Let me know. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, if you really like this, or if you like my other videos, please feel free to watch them. Um, I'll take you back over here to me. And remember to um, subscribe if you haven't already. To all of those who have subscribed, thank you so much. But those who haven't subscribed and you've been kind of thinking about it, go ahead, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want, click on the bell and then you'll get notification when my next video comes out. Usually on Tuesdays is when I try to get them out. But I've got my Oktoberfest next weekend and the following weekend. So we'll see when I get the next one out. Hopefully it'll be on time. And then if you want to contact me, my email is dncmc2 at yahoo.com. And if you would like to join my scrapbook group, my Facebook group, Let's Scrapbook with Deanne, go ahead and ask to join. I'll let you in. Um, I usually try to show new product coming up and um, other, other ideas besides what I just show on YouTube. And uh, then we can just uh, share what we've made. If you guys have made any of my borders, you can share it on my Let's Scrapbook with Deanne Facebook group. And I'm sure all of us will be so excited to be able to see all the, the ideas that were coming up and, and maybe how you've modified it. Because uh, feel free, modify these however you like. They don't have to be exact by far. All right. So thanks again, guys. And I will talk to you next time. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.